Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I've had to move the chicks into a new enclosure. One of the things that surprised me about having these chicks is, um, well, how quickly they grow, and also uh, how territorial they are. Uh, the initial enclosures that I chose for them would have been fine if they had been all peaceable kingdom, uh, kingdom with each other, but uh, they can be really pecky at each other, and I've increasingly just had to go to bigger and bigger enclosures, and now it's a kid-sized swimming pool, and we've got the cardboard here because they're starting to flap their wings, and it's just been a week. They're, uh, as of like this morning at 3 a.m., they're a week and, a, and 12 hours old right now. So this is uh, what we've got after a week. You know, they're eating their food out of there. They've uh, got their little water container here. I'm just going to go down to their water container. I've got these little cups that uh, kind of self-fill. They're still using their heater, and I'm working on their... Uh, uh, I want to say ultimate coop, but uh, the topic of this video is really that I don't think that this here is going to be their their ultimate coop. Uh, I know I keep changing my idea on what I want to do with this, and that comes down to the fact that I'm I'm just not really all that uh, knowledgeable about chicks, and that's putting it mildly. I've I have no uh, real knowledge of them whatsoever. I'm learning as I go. I mean, I've done some research from books, from a few YouTube videos. I actually find the books more helpful than a lot of the YouTube videos. Uh, just, yeah, I've got a lot of homesteading books here up in my library. I've gone through a bunch of those. And uh, what I've, co I've come to the realization that no matter how well I build this coop, it's not going to be 100%. I know it's not going to be 100%. This, I've, it's actually been really freeing for me to realize this is a version 1.0 and there's going to be a version 2.0. So it's, it's kind of freed me up from feeling like I've got to do this thing perfect because I know I'm going to fail to do it perfect because no matter what I do, there's going to be things I'm going to want to improve on it. So uh, the way that that has kind of modified what I'm uh, doing here is that uh, I'm, it doesn't have to be beautiful. I want it to be functional. Uh, you know, you can see here this, uh, this 2 by 3 here, it's going up to the... Uh, the ceiling rafters, it's screwed in over here and it's holding up this corner, there's no support under uh, this corner over here, and yet it's still, uh, it, you know, it's reasonably strong, river's uh, going around in there, and it's holding him, him up totally well, I can walk in there, it holds me up reasonably well, I'm not going to jump around, especially over by this corner, but I'm putting it together with the knowledge that this is not going to be perfect, this is going to be a learning experience, and I think ultimately... I think ultimately it is going to be outside for a couple of reasons, which I'll just uh, briefly mention here. One is, uh, you know, just the mess factor. Uh, I, I, the, it's a, a week old, and they're just they're such messy animals. I think there's just going to be straw and feathers and stuff everywhere in here. Um, so that's a concern. Uh, also for their, uh, their ranging, getting outside and everything, there is going to be their chicken run outside here. But the more I find out about it, the more it seems that they really want to have a pretty significant area. And whatever area they're in, if it's not really significant, they're really going to scratch it up and destroy it. So I think ultimately I want to have a coop in the middle of a very large enclosure, divided up into four quadrants, from the word four, quad, and uh, I'm, it'll be kind of like having fallow fields, uh, we, you know, where you don't plant a certain part of your garden. I'll let the chickens into one area, you know, for one year or for several months, and then have them rotate to another one while the first one heals, uh, and then kind of just rotate around. So uh, I'm working on this so that I can learn and find out all the things I want to do in version 2.0. And that's just the reality with life, is that you don't... You can't possibly always know everything about something before you go in, and for some people that really handicaps them. Uh, like they, they're always like, "Oh, I just I need to research more before I, I jump in on it." And it's good. It's good to know about something before you get into it. But you also want to avoid being uh, so hamstrung by the idea that you need to know 100% about everything before you get into it. That uh, you know it keeps you from ever doing anything. I know people like that that I've known in my life where they're uh, they just never actually. Uh, commit to doing anything because they, they never feel like they are 100% prepared for it. Uh, like having kids, <laughs> or chickens, or anything else. Sometimes you have to do the best you can, learn what you can, but then jump in knowing that you're going to be learning on the, on the fly, and this is going to be my learning experience. Although right now, it's, I don't mind it. It's kind of a jungle gym, right, River? Mm -hmm. That's it. Thanks for watching.